I've been using my Moonlander for over a year now, and through extensive trial and error, I've come up with a great productivity setup that I use on Mac OS. I've also created an extensive key mapping that I use to have a great coding experience in the Vim editor, but also how I can bring that Vim experience outside of Vim into other applications. And I'm super excited to share that with you today. I'm Alex, and I make videos for people who code. Since you're watching this video, you might like the other videos that I I've created about my Obsidian Second Brain, Zettelkasten workflow with NeoVim, that sort of stuff. Oh, and one last thing. I've made another video on my Moonlander keyboard, and if you're coming from that video, thanks for sticking with me. Otherwise, you might want to check that out when we're done. I'll leave a link at the end of this video, and there'll be one in the video description below. Let's get to my keyboard layout. I'm going to be talking about two layers on my Moonlander. The first layer is pretty much what you see on a regular keyboard, but with a few small, but very difficult to learn and highly impactful tweaks. And the second layer is really where my magic happens. So I'm just super excited to share this with you. Let's get to it. So here is my first layer. So for example, the key Q just does Q. If I hold down shift, which is under my pinky finger here, and press Q, then it does a capital Q. So as well, something you might want to do often is hold down control and press S for save. So that would be under my pinky finger in the bottom left is my control button and then I click save. Now before I go too deep discussing the custom keys that I've designed in my first layer, I'll explain what I mean by layers by showing you what my second layer does. And I call this my adjunct layer. This is enabled when I hold my thumb on this button here. And as soon as I do this, all of these keys you can see on the screen become available to me. So for example, I can click this button here, this S, to save things. Or I can click this Q up in the top left to open a new window. But also, I can press this V button to do a space, or the B to do an, a return. And I can backspace by pressing this F button. So this lets me do some really convenient commands without even having to use my right hand. So you might be wondering, why is it that when I press my thumb down on this button, I get into my adjunct layer? And that's because I set the button right here. And it says when tapped, it toggles layer one. And what this means is it's only alive while I'm pressing the thumb down. And as soon as I release it, it changes. The other layer I showed you was the azath layer and that's mapped under my index finger. This one works differently. And when I press this button up here, it switches to that layer uh, permanently until I move back. So now I'll show you some of my favorite key mappings in my main layer. One of the big things I did was put a shift key under my thumb. So that way when I'm typing, I can hold down shift with my thumb here and I can use my pinky finger to press buttons like A, Z, hello YouTube. This is me typing on my moon lander. There are three other big key mappings that I had to get used to with this setup, and those are on the right hand side of the keyboard. The first thing I did was to put the backspace under my index finger, which is pretty unusual for people with Moonlanders. So when I would do backspace, I'll go like this. Then under my right thumb, I have a space and an enter. So I can type spaces like this, and I can press enter with the one below. One of my favorite parts about using this keyboard is how I can move through different windows in my workspace on my Mac. In order to show you that, we're gonna have to go into this adjunct layer, which again is available under my right thumb. So when I press this down, I go into this world here. The first thing that's awesome about this place is that I can press down with my index finger right here and expand all my windows. I really like doing this on Mac because then I can grab the window I want next and click into that one. This also allows me to use my right hand freely while I open it up and I can sort of be moving around and grabbing the next window really fluidly like that. So if I do this and go up to the top, you should be able to see that I have four desktops right now and each of these will have various projects and things I'm working on. So I can press left and right on here to bounce between those. The other two window movement buttons I use a lot are this guy and this guy right here. So this one I can use on the right to bounce between my, my applications, just using one hand like this. 
and if I wanted to just quickly um, hop back and forth between two of the same window, I would use this one. I find this really handy, especially with terminals where I might have a lot of terminal windows open. And what I can do is then just cycle through them using this button here. A couple other awesome things that I've done on my main layer is to have more complicated mappings. So this button here has this strange combination of characters which happens to map to an app I have called Hazeover. And when I press that, Hazeover gets enabled and I can, in this case, get a highlight of my active window and the, the rest of my windows become darkened. So that's nice to have under my fingertip. Another thing I use all the time is this one under my, um, right, uh, my left thumb rather here and this will take a screenshot. So now let's talk about how my arrow keys work. I have a couple arrow keys here under my index finger and my middle finger on my right hand, but I never use these guys. Instead, I'll press this button down with my thumb to go to my adjunct layer, and then I have this row of characters here which becomes arrow keys. If anyone has used Vim before, then they'll know that this is how we move around in Vim. I'll show you what I mean. Here I have VS Code with the Vim plugin, so I can press H to move to the left, L to move to the right, and I can go up and down with K and J. For me, when I press my Azath layer, I can actually do the same, but I wouldn't need Vim to be enabled to do that. So people who like Vim are probably getting pretty excited right now because you can see that I'm using Vim commands here in just a plain text editor. I can also do stuff like hold my pinky finger down on this little option key and start um, skipping through text, or I could say hold it on the control key and skip to the end of text or the start of the lines like that. I can't obviously use full Vim commands um, in a text editor here, like as in uh, Bs and Ws and going to the beginning and the start of the line. Which brings me into the next thing that I've done. And I've done some of these symbolic mappings in my adjunct layer so that they work really nicely with Vim. Um, specifically these two guys that I just showed you here, which is the caret key and the um, dollar symbol. Uh, so if I go back to my code here, say I want to get to the start of the line, well I would press this little caret key here, and if I want to get to the end, I press this key here. And to me this just makes so much more sense than hopping up into this number line to do these things. When I go back to a regular keyboard, I do have a hard time with, with doing this sort of thing in Vim. I've also put the star and hash symbols really easy to access under my index finger because I use these all the time. So for example, here I want to jump to the next story ID. I can easily do that just by pressing the button under my index finger. As well, if I want to go back to the previous one, I press the hash symbol like this and I can hop back. Now I'll talk about brackets. I put all my brackets in a really convenient spot because I use brackets all the time. So say I had a new function, you'll notice that I'm just using adjunct with my pinky finger to do underscores here. Um, I'll call it new function A, I'll throw open, open a bracket and uh, it'll take an argument, um, I don't know, like thing, because I'm feeling extremely creative right now and it'll return a string. Okay, so we're gonna like do something to this thing. Let's start by printing it. So now when I press this button here, boom, I open up a bracket under the eight key. Um, but I've got all my brackets set up sort of right beside each other. So I have um, these guys, regular brackets, curly brackets, and square brackets. And yes, I've spent a lot of time moving these around and changing how these work. So it's, uh, it's taken me a while to figure this out, but I've got these set in places I like, and I'm really starting to get it now. Um, all right, so I was gonna maybe print my thing, right? And then let's, uh, it's a string. Hmm, maybe I don't want it to be a string, you know? Um, maybe I want it to be a list. And then I can say for item in, or uh, list comprehension, right? So thing two equals, and then I'm gonna open up my um, square bracket to do a list, and it's just right there under, under my finger thing plus two for uh, t in thing. Of course, I didn't do that right, so that's better. Okay, cool, so it's adding some stuff to thing, uh, which means, you know, if I'm being nice and pythonic, I'll, let's say that it's a list of integers, and I'll return uh, just like one of the elements, but maybe I'll cast it as a string. 
Having brackets really easy to access like this is also awesome for moving around code. One thing you can do with Vim is you can press the curly bracket to hop around like this through uh, white space in the code. So um, I can just easily do that up and down here. One problem I constantly run into with this setup is that I want everything to be accessible in my adjunct layer. And for that reason, I've done a lot of crazy stuff on the left hand side here. So what's going on here? Well, instead of having to press control and do stuff, I'd love to just press my thumb down and do stuff. And what I mean is I wanna be able to save documents. I wanna be able to press control W to close out of windows. And then I wanna use certain Vim commands. And one of those is control D. So when I press my thumb down and press D, I can go down and then I can press this little button under my index finger to go up. Yes, that means I have mapped that button to control U. This is the true joy of using this is that you can create whatever you want. It's been great sharing my keyboard configuration with you. And if you've done something similar, then I would love to hear about it in the comments below. And if not, I hope this video gives you the motivation you need to go create a beautiful keyboard interface that fits your productivity style and helps you have a better experience on your computer. I want you to feel like the king or the queen of your digital world. Thank you for watching. I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and consider subscribing. I've made another video on my Moonlander keyboard and this will be interesting to you specifically if you're thinking about buying one of these. I have a link to that here where I talk about things like which key switches I chose, the kale black linear switches, as well as my biggest challenges and my biggest benefits that I've seen from using this keyboard. Thanks again. My name's Alex and have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.